So we've learned how to do full fine tuning on a model. We've learned how to fine tune a model using PEFT. Now what I wanna do is take the data set that we created from Reuters, the tokenizer we created from GPT-2, and then we're going to train a model from scratch. So we're not taking a pre-trained model and then fine tuning it. We're training a model randomly initialized with weights from scratch on a data set. So let's hop into it. First and foremost, let's import our packages here. And now we are going to load in our data set. And this is our Reuters articles data set with a train validation and test set. And each example is, contains a title and a body. And also what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our full article column. And we're going to map that to every example in the data set. So let's let that run. And as you can see, we've added the full article column. Let's show what a one example looks like by pulling out the first example in our training set. And you can see it has title, Bahia Coco Review, and then body. Showers continue throughout the week in the Bahia Coco Zone, and this is the article. Now let's load in our GPT-2 Reuters tokenizer that we uh, trained beforehand. So that loaded in, and now let's get down to actually preparing this data set. So we're gonna, I created this method, uh, this function called tokenize, where it's gonna take in an example or a set of examples, and it's gonna tokenize the full article column. It's gonna truncate any, any articles that are longer than the maximum length here, context length, right? So every single example is going to be at max 512. And re return overflowing tokens, this is gonna make sure that if there are any tokens, let's just say that an article is longer than 512, we're, that extra that's left over, we're just gonna throw it away for now. And maybe for your use case, you wanna keep it because you're just trying to generate text and you don't want it to generate articles. Whatever it is, you can. this is how I chose to do it, just to keep it simple. It actually makes our data set smaller. And so I'm gonna do that. So now we're just gonna load in our model or prepare our model for training. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a configuration. So we need to create a model configuration so that when we create this new model, Hugging Faces Transformers Library knows what we need uh, whenever we create it. And so we're gonna create a GPT-2 configuration with a vocab size the same as our tokenizer. We can just call the length function on our tokenizer and get 52,000, which is the vocabulary size we had for our tokenizer. And then we can specify our context length to be 512. And because that was what we used beforehand with the tokenizer, and then we set our beginning of sentence token and our end of sentence token. So the model knows when a sentence begins and when it ends. And let's let this run and check out what the config looks like. And so let's inspect the config. So this is what the config looks like. So this is what we're using to be able to create our model. This right here gives all the information to hug, uh, the Transformers library to be able to create this model. So when we pass this config into the GPT-2 LM head model, which we imported up here, it's gonna take all of this information and create a model for us. And we do that here and we print out the number. We have almost 126 million parameters in this model. Now, what we're gonna do is here, we're gonna pull in this data collator for language modeling, and we're going to create a data collator using it by passing in the tokenizer. And essentially by setting MLM at the defaults here, this data collator is going to take our inputs, which is just these title body, you know, title bodies, these full articles, and it's going to, uh, after we tokenize them, it's going to create labels. And what these labels are, what the labels are for our model, because we're trying to get this model to generate text, what well, the labels are just going to be each token shifted to the right. Now what that means is, is that for example, let's go back up into our article. If this is one token, if we pass this token into the model, we are going to train it to be able to predict, let's just say ba is the token here. We're gonna train it to predict ba whenever title's passed in. And so you can imagine taking this sequence right here and having uh, the input be title and its subsequent label being ba or bahia, whichever way we want. And so whenever it passes in bahia, we're gonna pass in a uh, space coco right here and we want it to predict it. So the label is the next token in the sequence. And so when you have them side by side, the inputs are gonna be this right here, and the labels are gonna be pretty much this, right? Because whenever we pass in title colon, 
we're gonna want Bahia to be our label. Make sure that that's the word that gets predicted. And then when we pass in title colon Bahia, we want Coco to be the word. And so this data collator is gonna shift our inputs such that the labels are literally the next token in the sequence for every single token in our sequence. Because causal language models are only trained to predict the next token in the sequence. I hope that makes sense. Um, it, it, that's essentially what's being done here is that the data collator is going to do all that shifting for us so we don't have to worry about it. And that makes our lives a lot easier. And now let's get to training our model. As always, let's log into Hugging Face so that we can push our model to the hub. Let's grab our access token. Let's move it here. Let's log in. Wait, awesome. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this to the Hugging Face Hub by you know setting our directory to be Reuters GPT-2 text gen. Um, everything else is the same. There's a few other parameters that I saw that were uh, optimal for causal LMs, you know, where we're just predicting the next token in the sequence. And so I've changed these right here. I've also set FP16 to true. This just means that we're using floating point 16 precision. Remember back to the slide where I explained that you can uh, cut the precision of the model down to 16, that lowers the memory requirements and it speeds up training uh, because now you're not letting every parameter go to full floating point precision, you're cutting it down a little bit. And we set push, uh, push to hub equal true. We pass in our data collator to the trainer and let's instantiate. And so I'm not gonna hit train here because it takes in my opinion, quite a while. I'm using a T4 GPU up here, but it takes 30 minutes for two epochs on this data set. As you can see, the training loss actually gets lower. The validation loss gets lower on the second epoch. And if you kept training it, this model would become very, very good. So now I'm gonna push it to the hub. You can push to the up here. And if you go into your models, what you can see is you have a, you should have a GPT-2 Reuters that is the tokenizer, I apologize. You should have the Reuters GPT-2 text generation model right here with, you know, your loss will be printed and you can use it right here if you want and it should have everything you need in terms of model configuration, etc. And now you can use your model in Pipeline just like any other model. So let's do this. So our model has been loaded in from Pipeline. Let's pull out the sample that we actually want to use to be able to generate text. Now, let's think about this real quick. We just had a randomly initialized model. It is a brand new, fresh, knows nothing about the word, no, nothing about the world type model. And so I'm just gonna be happy if it doesn't output gibberish at this point. Um, but for a, realistically speaking, for a model that's only been trained for two epochs on the data set that we have for a GBT model, I'm only expecting it to do a few things. It should learn this syntax. Right? So this model, remember a causal language model is trained to be able to predict the next token in the sequence. And so if I, if I, if I pass in this title, colon, the title, and then a new line, new line body, it should generate the rest of the article. Now it may not know when to end and it may start repeating itself, but nonetheless it should do that. And so when I run this, I should get that output. And I'm looking for it to do two things, to learn that sort of uh, that sort of pattern, that if I pass in just title and then new line, new line, it should generate the body text and then the complete the body. And I'm also looking for it to learn the syntax within Reuters, you know? So that's what I really want. And so like you notice that Reuters has these uh, put in, Reuters uh, slash in XO3. Uh, they include that in a lot of the articles. And so I should see my model do the same thing, and it does. So this is the generated article. It puts in Reuters slash in new line X03, and then it also completes the article. It leaves off at body. It doesn't repeat body several times or repeat title or nothing like that. It just completes the article. And it probably doesn't know when to stop, but nonetheless, it does a pretty good job here, at least by my standards. And so now to test it even further, I'm gonna pass in just title and I'm expecting it to be able to output new line, new line, body, and then complete the body as well. And so let's see what it does. And as you can see, it outputs title, and then new line, new line, body. And so that is pretty good. I'm pretty good for a model that's only been trained for two epochs. Imagine 20, 100, 200, 
Imagine if it was a bigger data set. Imagine if it was a bigger model. We use GPT-2 and we use the uh, you know the same size as the smallest GPT-2 model. Imagine if we had used GPT-2 XL, which is an option in Hugging Face to use GPT-2 XL, which has 1.5 billion parameters. And so if you scale this up to 1.5 billion parameters, you scale this data set up to many, many, many more uh, examples, uh, possibly billions of tokens, and you train for you know plenty more epochs, I'm thinking this model is going to become very well at generating text. And now you have the capabilities of doing that, you just have to scale it up yourself. Now, here's the thing. So if you're using G uh, Google Colab on a free uh, GPU instance, it takes a while to train. 15 minutes of epoch is what it took for this model. However, you can break up the training. So in this section, I, what I do here is I pull down the model that I just trained or that we just trained, and then I'm going to actually keep training it again, push it back to the hub, and you can keep doing that. You can come in tomorrow and train this model again for another hour, and then come in the next day and train for another hour. Or if you have a free day, just train it for a really long time on this on this note in this notebook, and um, you know, 15 minutes of epoch, you know, just mo manage it and monitor it and make sure that it's you know, decreasing in training loss, decreasing in validation loss, but you can break the training up across several days. And this, when you push back to the hub, it'll just overwrite the previous model, so you have the new one. And here I trained it and got a lower training loss and a lower validation loss. So quite an improvement. That is how you can train a GBT2 model from scratch on your custom data set using your custom to tokenizer to predict the next token in the sequence.